you're talking about sort of first order dynamical circuits. And from here, you can get to a whole number of other kinds of circuit concepts. But what we're typically looking at here is looking at um, one state variable, which means one state holding element, which usually means we're going to get something with a resistor and a capacitor or an inductor. So in other words, we're going to get something that's going to be a sort of typical, <clears throat> say, voltage, and then something that's going to then affect the voltage in, a, in some sort of derivative way. We're going to be getting differential equations, first order differential equations out of the system. What we'll have is typically one thing that'll be storing something, storing something, whether it be charge, or whether it be some sort, or whether it's um, sort of a magnetic field potential. We're going to be getting storage in one case or another, and so we're going to be looking at these number of circuits. Many of these circuits are going to fall into two fundamental prototypes uh, at their first order. One is going to be sort of a resistor plus a capacitor typically in a low-pass type of configuration. And we'll talk, you know, in other places we'll talk about what the filtering looks like, but it gives you kind of a first-order behavior. Or it's a resistor plus an inductor. Again, the same type of topology. And in both cases, I'm going to get a very similar dynamic. I can actually solve both of these, one of which is going to be for the resistor and capacitor, typically, again, to use KVL around the loop. Know they have a voltage across this resistor and V out. As a result of that, I also know that the current in here is the same. So the V, the res voltage across that resistor over R, is going to be basically related to the current into this capacitor. Okay. As a result of that, and knowing I have an R and a C, I take that product, I call that my time constant. I take, you know, some I take my voltage, and I know that this sort of volt, I know that my derivative voltage now looks like tau times dv out dt. So that actually kind of starts my analysis and I end up getting this as my differential equation for that circuit. I can do something very similar for the inductor. Again, KVL around the loop. After that, now I'm going to have a current. I know the current is related to the output voltage over R because it's right in this node here. Um, I also know that I, if I divide a, a tau now as induct L over R, what I'll find is that the voltage across the inductor is L times the current that's in that loop, dt, where L over R di dt is my solution <clears throat> So, for what that voltage is. So I can take this with this time constant and, and then sort of both L di dt, L over R d voltage times basically this is the voltage of V out over dt, I'm slightly miswritten here, but that's dV out dt, and as a result I get the exact same differential equation when I'm done. And this really turns out to be quite quite useful. It's like I'm going to get the same first order equation in either case. So what is this kind of what what are the implications of this? Well, one, understanding this circuit or this circuit, these are going to be prototype elements for a number of things. What are the questions I'm going to ask? As I'm going to want to, want to know what are my equivalent resistance and equivalent capacitance. So all of a sudden now I'm back to a network question of saying how do I build a one port network for all of my resistors? And this is going to be talking about an equivalent resistance. And then everything kind of simplifies to this basic concept. Similar sort of thing will happen with the resistance and, and inductance and resistance case. And then what is an element? Of course, I may have a bunch of inductors in parallel, and I will want to work with that, or a bunch of capacitors, a couple of capacitors in series. Again, all of this, all of the things that, that we may have looked at in previous linear circuit elements all come together in a case like this. Other things you may have learned from linear circuits, all of this is applicable. The second thing is you have the same differential equation in both cases. Now there's a couple different forms you could look at and a couple different behaviors, but the zeroth order behavior tends to be this very simple low pass uh, differential equation. And so you would if you've looked at these solutions, you would imagine you have an exponential decrease, um, decre decreasing function. This is a stable differential equation and it's related to tau. And so you're expecting elements and solutions of that form of an equation anytime you're in a first order system. It's also going to be interesting depending on how the input voltage is driven. It doesn't have to be a simple step. It could be a sinusoid. 
It could be a whole set of complex signals. And this will be another question of how do I begin to approach those solutions? And if you haven't looked at these questions, there's some wonderful methods for solving it. Wonderful methods for handling this in general for linear systems. Uh, and so it's just a matter of kind of being comfortable with that. Either you've seen, been familiar with it or you get a chance to be familiar with it in these systems. So there's something very elegant and very um, straightforward in all of these elements. And and so this is kind of where you're beginning a starting point of which you can use to jump off for multiple approaches.